Now you know that when I first came here on my bike that day, I could see all this activity and jerseys on the wall and old jackets. And I was, you know, 18, 19. I was like, it sure looks fun in there. <laughs> so here's Marky's bleachers. Right across the way, which is a fine place to get a, a, a dog. It's kind of fitting, I think, that you and I are sitting in this room because there were many a night after Cub games when I got off work. And then we came in here and we had some fun nights. That, that last October was one of the most fun months of my life. I can't imagine what that month was like for you. It was just incredible, incredible to feel the, the vibe of the city, uh, the vibe of the team. You know, you put something out like this and you're lucky to catch the story because it's like a hundred plus years in the making. You know, you don't kind of get, you don't come across that intense drama that often. It was unforgettable. And then that's why this thing's kind of cool because it does, it's a place to put those memories. We had to stop here. I'm bringing some home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant it in Seattle. We're gonna have, we're gonna have Wrigley Field side. You know, you were, you've gone from the kid fan to the adult, successful person who gets on the inside and wants more. You know, you could have gotten in there and been like, I want to hang out with these guys, or it, but they're really, they're really interesting people inside that building back there. Look, I feel like the freaking Charlie Bucket, Willy Wonka, luckiest guy in the world for for knowing these guys you know I've known Theo for 15 years it's just such a good energy that they've really cultivated and there were many many times when that never existed you know there's I think there's a reason why you know it's it's not happenstance and it wasn't just magic and maybe because of the adversity in the years that they'd have to, that they all suffered from the '69 Cubs to the '84 to Ryan Dempster's Cubs. So when Gary Woods Cubs, when know, Rizzo was... squeezed that ball at first base in Cleveland last year, basically that was a win for Jody Davis and Billy Gary Williams Wood and, and Mark Pryor and Randy Huntley and absolutely. Cubs So you have everything kind of culminating with an August shows at Wrigley Field. You're a lifelong Cub fan. They end up winning in October, first time since 1908. And you have this behind the scenes access. How beautiful is that? It's a, it's a pretty good home movie. I think there's a scene at the end where I think Dempster looks at me around the field after. And, yeah. and I, I think I'm getting chills now, but he, he's, it happened. That's right. It happened. <laughs> you know, and and uh, that's what the the great thing about sport really is. It's it's really the the drama, and this became kind of the ultimate drama because of the the history of it. That's a fly ball. He's the left back. Back. That's it. That's it. Hey, he did it. Ernie Banks got number five hundred. Ernie Banks asked me to write a song for the Cubs and for Wrigley Field and all this kind of stuff. And I was, you know, he's asking me and I'm looking into the eyes of Ernie Banks and it's like looking into the eyes of, of Wrigley Field. At the beginning of that rain delay, he was going to come up and, and stand with me while we did all the way. And he was pretty fragile at the time. I said, Ernie, I said, it might be a while. I just talked to the, it might be a while. And he, he said, okay, okay. He said, is that some red wine over there? <laughs> I said, sure is. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd take a glass of that. And then it turned out to be a couple hours sitting with Ernie Banks and him talking to my daughters and, and talking about the old mitt I had. I had brought my first mitt, you know, and now this is a good glove. There is love in this glove, you know, and then oh, wow. the whole. Is it different for you now? Does the song have the same meaning? Oh, I haven't meaning? played it since. 
<laughs> no need. No, someday we'll go all the way. Yeah, someday we'll go all the way. You don't have to be a diehard Pearl Jam fan to enjoy this documentary, and you don't have to be a diehard baseball fan to enjoy this documentary. It combines the best of, of both worlds. What's it like to play at Wrigley Field? There's an energy. There's an energy all around this. It's like humming. Thing. And then if you're in the middle of that, that's what really made baseball seem magic to me. You know, is, is this place and this neighborhood and this community. And years later to kind of be uh, invited to experience it personal and inside level. It, it's just a, been a huge gift. I don't think there's Unless any... you call us off. The only thing, you know, Evolution Last Exit, Lightning Boat, we kind of keep those yeah. tight. Hey, am I counting you off on Alexa? Please, if you would. Sometimes it feels weird because I'm like, I can tell that it's not where you're kicking out. You wrote the damn thing. I'm just going to look at you and go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> what I loved is watching you guys interact and, and seeing the way you can laugh and how relaxed you are and how close you are. I mean, there's a brotherhood there that's that's built over the years, and that's the same that it takes for a team to be successful. There are a lot of parallels there. I think you're right. There, there is a lot of teamwork <laughs> documented in this film, and, and uh, it's individuals coming together for a greater purpose. There was some sort of impromptu secret Pearl Jam show yesterday on top of a roof at a local bar in Wrigleyville. Is it cheesy to ask you to compare, since I'm a Pearl Jam fan, Matt and Mike and Jeff and Stone and Eddie to members of the 2016 Cubs? I would say just from doing Setless alone, I've got a lot of Joe Madden sure. uh, traits. And then once game starts, then I gotta be, uh, I'm a player coach, right? Right. I, I would say that the battery in, in baseball would be the pitcher and the catcher. Right. The battery in a band is the bass player and the, and the, and the drummer. Mike McCready is the center fielder. And then I would say Stone, you could put him anywhere in the infield. Like a utility, he's the Ben Zobrist. Yeah, but he makes amazing plays. And then I'll put me in the outfield, because that's where... That's where you want Jose to be. Cardinal used to. <laughs> right, with your little number like, one jersey. I, I go for the diving catch. First time you walk in a really field, it's like stepping into Oz. You need to look into that camera, Eddie, and say this will be the best documentary you've ever seen in your life. <laughs>